You're watching News Review on Press TV. Media reports suggest a convoy of American military vehicles laden with a stolen Syrian oil has left the Asaka countryside in the Arab country, Fort Iraq. According to local sources, the convoy, comprised of 85 tanks and other vehicles, left Syria for Iraq via a border crossing that Damascus considers to be illegal. In recent months, the U.S. occupation forces have reportedly taken out dozens of vehicles laden with stolen Syrian oil from Hasaka to Iraqi territories. Syria says uh, this is aimed at plundering the nation's resources and reinforcing the U.S. foothold in that country. The United States reportedly began constructing a new military facility in the Syrian province of Deir al-Zur in October, making it the fourth illegal base that Washington is operating in the province. Time now for some more information and uh, some insight on this. So joining me will be Mohammad Ali, our correspondent in Damascus, and also Tim Anderson, director of the Center for Counter-Hegemonic Studies, who's joining us out of Sydney. Good to have you both, gentlemen, on the show. Uh, to Damascus first, uh, Mohammed, this has been going on for some time. U.S. has been uh, removing uh, Syrian soil uh, via Iraq and, uh, and then selling it, probably. Yes, exactly. And actually, every couple of uh, weeks, tens of uh, U.S. Uh, trucks and uh, tankers, empty ones, enter from Iraq into Syria and go back illegally into Iraq, full and filled uh, with uh, stolen uh, Syrian oil. And this is what recently uh, Syria state news agency SANA reported. It said that 85 trucks and uh, tankers uh, filled with uh, stolen Syrian oil crossed uh, from the illegal uh, border crossing uh, of uh, Al Walid uh, from Al Hasake countryside uh, into Iraq. Uh, according to Sana, uh, the convoy was accompanied by 16 U.S. Uh, armored uh, vehicles, uh, and uh, uh, the Sana's uh, news was based on eyewitnesses, locals from Al Swaydia village, which is in Al Hasake countryside. This uh, is actually not a surprise. It's not the first time uh, U.S. President Donald Trump said it clearly that uh, they're keeping the oil. Uh, they're stealing, actually, uh, the oil. And it's very important to note, too, that the U.S. presence in Syria is illegal. Without a U.N. mandate, there's no uh, Syrian uh, government consent. And we have mm -hmm. to also point out that its presence is not just about stealing Syria's oil, but also destroying Syria's infrastructure in U.S.-led uh, coalition uh, uh, airstrikes and also killing civilians. Mm -hmm. Now let's move to Sydney. Tim, uh, what's the U.S. forces doing there? I mean, uh, I remember President Trump uh, last year saying that we have defeated Daesh. He bragged about it. He said we'll leave the rest of them and we'll get our soldiers out of the country. But that hasn't happened. Is this why U.S. is maintaining its presence in Syria to plunder the resources? Uh, partly, but let's remember the rationale that U.S. intelligence told us um, back in 2012 for Daesh, ISIS, controlling part of Syria was precisely to weaken Damascus. So the U.S. knowingly supported the establishment of an Islamic state in eastern Syria eight years ago to weaken Damascus because they were trying to overthrow the government there. And so the occupation of northeastern and eastern Syria and the plundering of the oil is really along the same lines. They want to weaken Damascus. They want to punish the Syrian people because let's remember the 85 trucks, that's about 16,000 barrels of oil. But the US imports nine million, more than nine million barrels of oil per day. So what they have just stolen from northeast Syria is less than 0.2% of what the U.S. uses. So it's not really significant for the U.S., but it's significant for the Syrians. It's depriving the Syrians of their cooking and heating fuel and so on. So they, they are trying to punish the Syrians, that's what I think. And Tim, will, will the U.S. Uh, ever leave Syrian soil? When will that happen? I think they'll leave when they're forced to leave, basically. They'll, they'll, they are experiencing a certain amount of harassment now. Their proxies, the SDF, which they created five years ago, um, like their other proxies, is subject to popular attack at the moment. And they'll leave when they decide the costs are greater than the benefits they're getting from it, or when there's some reassessment of the strategy of the U.S. occupation in not just Syria, but in Iraq also. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much for that. Mohammed Ali joined me from Damascus and Tim Anderson, director of the Center for Counter-Hegemonic Studies out of Sydney. And that's it for this edition of the News Review.